All right. Shabbat Shalom. Send that salam. Greetings, brothers and sisters. In a Wyndham Yadon, Aras Yadinos Tesari, of the Yehuda Moa Andesa Machiber, or the Lion of Jewish Society of the Imperial Majesty. And this is the 34th Parsha or Kufal, our Torah portion, the Rastafari Sabbatical Studies. And if you turn to the chart, you should be familiar with this by now. And I chart on the Sabbath house reading. And you go to page 6, we're at 34. And 34, you can see the number is bold because that begins a new book. Unfortunately, we don't have um, our site copy as of yet, did not come from the printers. Um, um, Ben Midbar or Ba Midbar, which means in the wilderness, in the wilderness. And we've completed the Vayikra, Vayikra, or the Ethiopic book, or Rit Ze Lewawian, or the Torah of the Levites. And now we're into Orit Ze Chulk, Ze Chulk, right? And Ze Chulk, um, or Chulku, means um, it refers to the numbering in the Gutters. It refers to the numbering or the counting, the counting and the accounting and the accountability. Now, I was reasoning with one of I and I brothers, um, Halo I and I brother Ross or Reed. He was reasoning, and in that particular reasoning, we had touched on a portion from St. John's on the Comforter. Now, I think the reasoning of the Comforter is very, very important, and these New Testament um, foundational studies also needs to be articulated, needs to be studied as well. So when you look at the Torah portion, reading and feeding, you see that there's a portion from the Old Testament. For example, for the 34th Bamarinya is Midre Bedda. Midre Bedda. Midre Bedda is basically the wilderness, but it's Bessina Bamarinya, according to Kedamawi Haile Selassie's Book of the Seven Seals, or the revised Amharic Bible is called Besina Midre Beda, or in the wilderness of Sinai, in the wilderness of Sina, in the wilderness of Sinai. This is the location, this is the new location, the new area of study of the five books of Moses, or the five Torahs. We are now into the fourth book, which is known as Numbers, the Hebrew book of Numbers, and is also known as Bamidbar or Bamidbar in the Hebrew, in the wilderness, Bamarinya, we know the book as the Orit Zechulku, or Zechulku, right? <clears throat> According to the, the Gutter's pronunciation, still a little bit of um, um, uh, discussion about what is the proper uh, Ethiopic, when we look at the Ethiopic pronunciation. Now, the titles of the books are Gutters, because the translation of his match is coming straight forward out the Gutters. So, here's the section that we would be Bamarinya, you understand, on them hard right there. You can see the title right there, just to give you a sight sample. That's Zechulk, or Zechulku, right? And so, we we'll begin, we we'll begin over here. Let's let's begin over here and just read the first verse or two. So the portion that constitutes it constitutes um, Numbers chapter one and one from verse one to Numbers chapter four, verse twenty. And what usually would be conducted in a communal sabbatical uh, fellowship gathering within a community setting would be that different brothers and sisters in certain communities um, would be called up to read a portion of Torah, of a portion of the scriptures. Now, in I and I community, of course, the Holy Scriptures is the Metzhaf Kedus of His Imperial Majesty, so the reader would read from Bamarinya in the more mature state, of Rastafari. Now, many of us are still at the Nabobbait state, and the Nabobbait state basically is learning the Fidels, 
you understand, know, learning to count the kutur system and the reading system, putting the weight basic words together. And this is one of the reasons why we have them hark online. Um, classes, the CDs, the um, and hark um, Bible, um, home schooling and the home studies are available, which begin with those basic level nabab bait. Nabab means reading. Bait means house. Nabab bait is the house of reading. And the Torah portions are the orit nabab or minbab. The more g is older expression, or the orit, the Torah, or the Ethiopic Torah, minbab, the readings of them. Now, so let's just deal with the first couple of verses, and then we're going to deal with the Targum here. We're going to take at least um, uh, the first uh, two or three verses. Now, here in the Schofield Study, the first Schofield Study Bible, it speaks of the order of the host the Sarawit, or the host is also the armies, the order of the armies. Here, Musa, Moshe, commanded to number the people, to number the people. That means to take an account of the people. Now, the whole idea of counting, accounting, is very, very important. In the English, it gets a little bit confusing because of how English language is a collection of different languages, so forth and so on. So it's a, some say a bastardized language. When we get into the more original languages of the scriptures, the, the Septuagint or the Greek, and then we get into the Hebrew or the Masoretic Hebrew, and then we get to the real higher level of studies, the, the Torah or the Ethiopic and the world Amharic, then it's much easier for us to trace words to their very root and their original context. In English, you can still do it, but it's a whole lot of, 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 it's more work because English has a lot of deceptive things there. For example, for example, this particular book right here, right, is the book of, is the book of numbers, right? It's, but how do you think of numbers? When you hear of numbers, do you think of one, two, three, four, five? Do you think of accounting, accountability? And the intro here in the Schofield is very good. We want to touch on that as well. So what we're going to do is begin with this Torah portion right here. Mm. Right? Begin with this Torah portion right here. Besim Ab Wolamenfis Kedus Ahadu Amlak. Orit Ze Chulku Mitraf And Kutran. Egziavi Hurun Musain Besina Midrebeda. The Meganano Dinquan was the Huletenio were the Majamario Ken Kurgut Midder Kawatu Bahala, the Huletenio Ahmet in D below Tenagaro, Kutera Hulet, verse two, or number two, which means verse two. Ye Israelina Lijocha Mahiber Hulu. Dimmer, Beye Waganacho, Beye Abato Chacho Abetoch, Beye Semacho Kutter, Wendun, Beye Rasu Wissedu, Kutter Source, verse 3. Kahaya Ahmet Jemro, Kaziam Belai Yalowin, Ka Israel Ode Self Yemia Watuten. Hulu Antena Aron Beye Sara Witochacho Kuteru Acho Kuteru Acho Kuteru Acho Number them. Now, perhaps we need to get to the, the board and see if we can try to connect. First of all, this is a new book. This is a new Torah portion, and for the last couple of days, besides the last vid that we put up, We've been feeling like we've been like on the mountaintop, so to speak, you know, in, in some, some high reasonings and ideas and preparations. And, and we, wanted to <coughs> we wanted to bring a reasoning forward to the brothers and sisters on some of the different things that we were noticing and overstanding or was being revealed to I and I. But yet still the meditation was going on. 
and knowing that the Torah portion is coming up, I was interested in how the Holy Spirit was going to show us the connection, both in what we're studying here historically, but also we have to remember that the Word is living. So there's an application for us if we would receive the wisdom. So it's not just studying historically and just on a theological level, but it's also the practical application thereof. So the Rastafari, the RSS, the Rastafari Sabbatical Studies, number 34. Now, from the, from the Hebraic, we're going to call it Ba Midbar, right? Ba Midbar. Ba, prepositional in Midbar, the wilderness. Ba Marinya, right? In Amharic, it is called, in Amharic, it is called as tighten that up, it's called mid, right, re, be, da, mid, re, mid, re, be, da, so that's what we're talking about with the fidel, the basic level, don't worry about being all fluent, and don't get in, caught up in like, you know, oh, I can't do it, because I'm not, it begins with those baby steps, being born again, so being as a child again, and even the um, and hard Bible home schooling. It begins with those basic principles. Now, some might be like, oh, well, that's, I want to get into some words because you want to go order some food in Jerana Wet at an Ethiopian restaurant and press folks get a, maybe a free bottle of Edge. That's, 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 that's nice. That's good. No problem with that. But there's also a study application of this that even those who may be newest to this, and feel that they have not really grasped it, begin with the basics, the basic fidel, the basic recognition, and the basic sounds, the basic phonetics. Mi, di, re, de, da. If one can cite and read, even at that level, that's the beginning level. Don't worry about the so-called flow and fluency, so forth and so on. The first thing is the, 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 the character recognition. You first have to get the character recognition. So this is one reason why even the, the Torah studies, though it's not dealing with full linguistics and grammar, some key words you can see from Shabbat to Shabbat and study to study we focus on because so much can be learned from just one particular key word put into its proper context can answer a whole bunch of questions, whether theological questions, spiritual questions, historical questions, psychological questions, economic, financial questions, the Bible, the scriptures, our covenant, the al Kidan has all of this in there. This is why this is so fundamental when we speak about our divine heritage. So how would we write this out phonetically? Meh, meh. Now, although we use here, oh, oh no, we use the, the proper, the commas here because really, there's not really a sound for this. Some might put an I here. You could put M-I-D-R-E, mid-dere, on that level. But really, we want to begin off with the fact that we use a schwa sound here, a schwa, the I. I does not have a vowel. Some transcribers put an I there, but it becomes very confusing. Or an upside-down E, they would put there. And unless you're dealing with it on that scientific um, linguistics, it can be a little bit confusing. So just to keep it to a simple code, we put this comma here for the schwa sound. So one can identify the letter and the order. And this is a D. The D also has a little, um, a, a little uh, comma-like because it's a uh. It's a uh. The sixth order was called schwa. Schwa. Schwa sound. Mid de re. Now, re... <coughs> We choose to put an E sound there, a re. Some might say re, some might say this, but the E sound has an E sound. Linguistically speaking, if you look in some books, they have an A with two dots over it for the, for the short E sound um, or the short A sound as an E sound. Then they might have the A with a long stroke over it, which is for a ah sound to distinguish the first, the G is order, but the G is order always has an eh sound, and we choose to transliterate it with an e sound, with maybe the exception of the, the oin, the aleph, and the oin, the a sound, right? 
So we have midre, 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 or midre, midre, be, da. So this is a little bit easier right here. Be, once again, the E for that first g is, g is order, right? And then we have da, which is the fourth order, and then we put an A there. So we have mid, uh, midre, be, da. E, re, be, e, 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 same order. You see, so there's a there's a phonetic, there's a tonal there, because there's a very important metaphysical and spiritual reason for those tones and those precision of tones and and harmonies. It says in the Book of Revelation that these overcomers will speak a language, which only they they will sing a song. In other words, which along only they will understand a new song. So that's the connection of Rastafari and the language. Right now, we're, we're putting this up here just to sync the Hebraic ba midbar be midbar, right? With midre beda. Midre means the land of beda, like the, the wasteland, the land of emptiness in a sense. So what's implied here is the wilderness. Now we know that the wilderness, right? Let's let's put this right here. The wilderness. Now, you might have heard or know that we are in the wilderness, some say, of North America. We've been in the wilderness of the Americas. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he taught and spoke that way, and he was right and exact with that. We are in the wilderness. Now, remember, the Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years. From that particular period of time, the 60s and so forth and so on, it's been about 40 years. So 40 years later, are we as the once lost but now found day to Israel, are we better off or not? That's the question we need to, to ask. And is there not a similarity in the experience of the Israelites in their 40 years in the wilderness? And we in this Ethiocentric or Ethiopianism, Ethiopianet movement of true Rastafari and Ethiopian Hebrews, aren't we too in that kind of a 40-year um, a wandering in the wilderness, so to speak. Now, the wilderness has many different applications. What's interesting is in this portion right here that we read the first um, two or three three verses of, here's the translation by, um, according to the King James Version. It should really be called according to the William Tyndale Version. You understand? If we really want to give credit where credit should be properly due, it says this, and Egeziaviher Lotus Subhat, and Yahweh Baruchu to him be the praise, blessed be he. He spake to Moshe, Moses, in the wilderness of Sinai, or Sinai. So the particular wilderness, it was the wilderness of Sinai. And if we had a map here, we can show you on the map, you understand? So you could, you could cut into this, those who would rework these videos and bring in some of the art and facts. A map to show where Sina or where it is believed Sinai, you understand, Mount Sinai or the wilderness of Sinai was, quote, historically speaking. It says, in the tabernacle of the congregation, in the what? In the tabernacle of the Machiber or the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, so we know at this particular point it is two years. They have been out of Egypt for about two years and two months, roughly. Now, verse 2 says, Take ye the sum or the account of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families by the number of their fathers, by the house, excuse me, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles. Every male by their poles. Now that's what what what, what King James or the, the KJV version says, Israelin the Jochma Khber Hulu Dimar Beye Waganacho Abeya Batochacho Abe Tocha Beye Semacho Kutar. It says when dun beya rasu it says the male the male by each of their heads, by each of their races, when dun, the male, 
Be'yerasu wusedu. So the polls here was what they call a head count. It was a head count. And it uses the word, Ethiopically speaking, ras, the Afro-Shemitic root word of rosh, the ras, right? Each one according to the name, every male by their poles, but here it says every male, beye rasu, according to their heads, according to their rases. So it shows that there's a particular order here. Now it says from 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel. So it says from everyone who was 20 years old and, and older, who was able, you understand, that means they had no physical or psychological really infirmities, that they were able to go forward to war in Israel or on behalf of Israel. So we see this, this, this military organization of the Beta Israel and we see that they are a nation. So when we talk about nationality and how do we become a nation, how do we reclaim, it begins with the Kal Kidan, it begins with Torah, and it begins first of all with us learning, getting informed, and then getting involved, you know, then learning and then acting off of what we learn, the practice and making perfect what we are learning in spirit and in truth. It says, Thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. So according to the Beya, I think it says Sarawi or Sharawi Tochacho. Um Beya Sarawi Tochacho Ruacho. So it says number them, number them according to their Sarawi. The word Sarawi is like say a host, to say an army. Number them according to their we might say cliques and posse, so forth and so on, but here it says Beya Sarawi tochacho, kutaruacho, number them, make an account, right, an account. So this is, this, is, this is beta Israel accounting and computerization, basically. Computer doesn't mean just what we use now. What you may be viewing this on is a computer. But if you go to the older version of the Webster's and, and dictionaries and you look under computer, you find that computer original definition or meaning meant a man, a human being, a person, if you will, who computates, a person who counts, who is accountable, is a computer, one who counts. So we see in Revelation says, um, and here is wisdom, you understand, count the number of the beast. So there we see another um expression or another use of that accounting. So I want you to get the idea here as we're in the book of Numbers, we're speaking about in Rastafari Revelation accountability, right? And then we're here we're getting organization, here's where we're getting structure, but all of this is only possible by true faith, admiss, ad, 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 admittance, and acting on you understand? Know Acting on, because if one says, yeah, I have faith, but no work, it is spiritually, and according to spirituality, it is dead, it is ineffective, it is inactive. So the work that the disciples right now, to keep the disciples accountable, is the studies, is the noting, the writing, and very soon even some essays and, and some of your ideas on what you're studying you're saying, what are you learning? What's being learned by this? This is what we're going to touch on more practical applications, even though we think we've been doing that, but make it a little more um, intentional, especially for the intentional disciple. So here it says, from 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou, speaking to Moses, Moshe, Musa, and Aaron shall number them by their armies. Then verse 4, which I don't know if I read verse 4, where it says, And with you there shall be a man of every tribe. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe. Every one head of the house of his fathers. That's verse 4. Arat. Um, it says, It says, Kaya Negadum. And so from each tribe one man. Yeah, Abatochu Beit of 
of his uh, father's house, Alaka, a chief or a head. That means one who is responsible. You know what I'm saying? So we have now also a sense of organization and responsibility. This is what this is the basis of unity when we speak about unity. But we have to have that spree de corps, the spree de corps, the Memphis caduce, the true spirit of the King of Kings and his Christ, and be willing to receive it and to submit to it. Otherwise, you know, people are gonna have mixed up moods and attitudes and coming with their own um feel out softlies or philosophies. All right? Um, can't stay, take a stand for the true king man because they got too many feel out softlies. You know, they're, they're playing politics. You know, we're saying this is theocracy. Will be with you all. You understand? So, so there would be one who is a, a chief or one who is responsible. So instead of having to communicate to every single person, as Moses, remember Moses was judging the different cases and was him alone judging from, from morning to evening, he, he now had to, once had to be chosen and, and elected within their group sense. So there's a democracy, if you, if you, if you must. You understand the democracy is in your group sense. So if you're gathering in whatever areas, if you have Bible studies, or some sort of fellowship in that area, ones and ones have to be in the spirit of God in Christ to recognize who is more capable and able and then to elect that person and pray on it and choose ones and ones to take on different roles of responsibility. And that's really the, the core of what I was on a mountaintop meditating, you know, that the harvest is, is ready, but the laborers or the co-laborers, the prepared co-laborers, are few. This is one reason why we keep focusing on the faith-based issues, sharing our witness, you know, and what, what we have experienced, what we have heard, in order to try to inspire those of y'all out there who do need a, a brotherly push, you, know, you understand, I mean, to go forward in the true faith of the King of Kings and our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, otherwise known as Jesus Christ but the true one, the woolly-haired one, the one who took on our humanity. He took on our Ethiopianness. He took on our blackness. He took on our woolly-hairedness. You know what I'm saying? And he was the, the first niggles that was, we can say, lynched amongst all of the other niggles or niggers who have been lynched. You see that connection? Amazing, isn't it? Was the word being revealed, but some don't want to accept it for what it is. You see, and that's the first level of faith. It is what it is. Jah exists. Jah is real. You understand? It's impossible to please God, you understand, without faith. One who comes to him must recognize, must, uh, must know that he is, period. And he is a rewarder of all those who diligently seek him. The study and the study, the Torah studies, all part of that seeking him, the, the, the prayer and the meditation time, that's all part of that seeking him. So he will reward that. Don't make a, a devil or a demoniac deceive you. Think that your spirituality and, and building and growing and learning of him and seeking to submit yourself to God in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, don't make anybody think you, make you think that's a waste of time. That's a devil. You understand? Straight up, whether they know it or not, they are being deceived. A, a more accurately, a demoniac, you understand? Um, they, they're not even on the level, really, of, of, of devil in that sense, but devil's got them, got them going. Now, um, the Israelites, going through a lot of experiences, are about to go through some experiences in this book. If you know what's in this book, there's some very interesting experiences that we hear about elsewhere. In other words, we might have heard about these experiences in church, so forth and so on, but some of these particular experiences, um, they're about to, I think this is the brazen serpent, you know, where they get, where they get bit by the flying, flying serpents, the experiences of wandering, you know, in the wilderness that the children of Israel had gone through. And um, the wilderness, it must be remembered, was a, it was a part of necessary discipline of the redeemed people, but not the years of wandering. So what we need to understand is that the wilderness was a part of 
necessary discipline. So let me put discipline right here, all right? This discipline, uh, right? We could we could put discipline shit to say discipleship, the wilderness. But because the people were were hard of hearing and even harder to do and to incline their wills to be obedient to the good influences of Jah through Moses and Aaron, you know saying, and the Word, the living Word, they went through an experience of what is known as wandering. You know, like when you're always wondering, you know, you've been learning all that you've been learning and some of you are still wondering about it. You understand? You're still wondering, is it, is it true? And when you see a little confirmation, like, wow, that really is true. You're still wandering. You understand? Because somehow you're going away from the discipline. Now, if you're not in the discipline, the discipleship, then, then, then where are you? See, the wilderness is not the problem. And, and see, now, what is the wilderness if we now begin to, in Christ, in Yeshua, in, in the indwelling presence of Christ, we begin to meditate, okay, that was the Israelites in the wilderness. Now, how does, it's a micro, you understand, it's a, it's a, it's a micro, is in the macro, and even the macro, the big picture can be seen in the micro. How am I as an individual? Can I be my own individual wilderness? We, we are many times. Now, the wilderness is not the bad part. We think the wilderness is the bad part. You understand that we're going to hear how the Israelites, remember the Israelites are a bunch of people, it's like we're a bunch of people, but they are a corporate person. They are a corporate person. You understand? Together they are one. How do we know this? Because what Yah says, what Jah says. He says, my son is Israel. I have called my son Israel. Israel is my son. So Israel is Jah's Harui, his Horus. The true Horus or the Hebrew Horus is Israel as a corporate, you understand, know as a corporate person. So this idea of corporate person is not really new. It's already here in the Bible. Then we begin to understand, oh, this is how they get these ideas like a corporate entity, everything. It's from the scripture. You understand, know where, where we are all members of what a body of Christ, but the key thing is the Holy Spirit. The key thing is the spirit de corps, like in any army. The key thing is the spirit of the of the body, which is the spirit de corps. You understand? What is the, what is I and I spirit de corps? It must be the Memphis Caduce. And the Memphis Caduce is directly connected with the Metzhav Caduce, because through the Caduce and the Biyat, the holy prophets, you understand, did Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, did he speak? And he is the one who the Bible calls the Kedus, the Holy One, Jah's Holy One, the, the Son of Jah, the Son of God, the Bain Ha Elohim, if you please, Baruch Hu. Blessed is he. Now, so the wilderness is one thing, and the wandering was something else. And we learn about that in this particular chapter. You understand the wilderness and the wandering experience. We have some gainsayers, you understand, some who begin to speak against um, Moses in particular, even some family ones. So you have a little trouble with your family on some level, you understand, well, look, look what happened to Moses. I mean, even some of his family members who you would think that they understood since they were there so long with him, but here's the key thing. I think Aaron and, and, and Miriam were older than Moses. You see what I'm saying? And, and you get that sometimes it's the younger child that is chosen. And you kind of see that also in the scriptures a lot as well. That's not saying that for the older ones, they are not called to, but to whom more is given, more is required, right? So there are some very important um, main notes here. we we also going to touch on Balaam, Balaam. Balaam, who is Balaam? And why does Revelation tell us about Balaam? So when we get to Revelation, we start to see a lot of hints and references to things that are in these core scriptures. This is why the Torah is the core, is the core curriculum. You understand? For I and I, it's the core curriculum. And um, so far, we see the Israelites are, are two years in the wilderness, right? The Israelites are two years in the wilderness, two years and two months into the wilderness. So I'm just scanning through here and... Um, seeing some of the footnotes and the main subject matters that are spoken of in this particular book. Now, for, the, for our discipleship studies, 
I'll probably do a separate vid to maybe um, highlight and some of the main things. You need to get a good copy of the Queen of Sheba and Only Son Minulik. In fact, the more we begin to, to study it in these studies, we begin to see that what we write about in our preface to some of our um, Torah, Torah uh, Hebrew books of the Bible from the, from the wiki compilation, we say this right here. We say, um, as ethnic or black Hebrews or Afro-Israelites, we have several well attested to, thoroughly researched, and duly documented ancient Ethiopian books and manuscripts, or what's technically known as MSS. A manuscript is MS for short, and MSS mean more than one manuscript. So there's many um, ancient and well attested to documented Ethiopian books and manuscripts. And that thankfully help serve as resource and reference materials comprising what the present author and compiler has suitably named, what Ainai Rasiadinos has named as the Ethiopic Talmud. You understand? Know because Talmud, we can break that word down Ethiopically, Telemede. Telemede comes from Lemede, to become used to something, to become accustomed to something, to become habitualized to something is basically what Talmud means, but in the Hebraic, Judaic sense, it's a sense of teaching. So we could say, give us a Talmud of His Majesty. That would be a way of saying, give us a teaching, you understand, of His Majesty from a Hebraic, Judaic sense. So we have the Ethiopic Talmud, many of these that were written in the Gutas or the Ethiopic language. These manuscripts assist us in forming our own Ethiopian Hebrew and black Jewish commentaries and exegesis from a non-Eurocentric perspective. A few of the main Ethiopic Talmudic commentary source materials and titles are, namely, but not strictly limited to, the following volumes. And the first volume that we name here on page 15 in our introduction to the five parts of the Hebrew, the Hebrew Torah books, the five parts. This is Vayikra here, um, this month, Bemidbar, and then finally um, 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 Devarim, which is uh, Orit Zedagim, Ethiopically speaking. But the Queen of Sheba and Only Son Minulik, which is this particular book right here, uh, um, also known as the Kibra, the, the Kibra Neges, the Book of Jubilees, or Little Genesis, which is known as Kufale, the Book of Enoch, or the Ethiopic Hainok, um, the Gedla Adam, which is the Conflict of Adam. That's another book that we published that we have around here. In fact, that was a part of the meditation on the mountaintop, some interesting, um, just seeing how it all comes together when we have our source materials. Because in ancient Ethiopia, these were materials that those who had the, the privilege and access to such studies were, were privy to. And this is how we protected you know, the Al Kidan and our, our divine heritage. You understand? Um, next book we have is the Ancient Egyptian Wisdom and Chemite Mysteries. We, that's the name that we give to this, mainly Gerald Macy's. A Book of the Beginnings, Natural Genesis, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, and Lectures. So that's a part of what we regard as the ancient Egyptian wisdom and Chemite mysteries. And one particular reason why we single out Macy above a lot of other scholars and authors that you might be more familiar with is because for his time and period, he was able to make the Ethiopic connection. In other words, he goes on the record, Ethiopic. I mean, putting Ethiopic at the root, at its proper root and source, the headwaters of the Nile, and thus Egypt as the first colony of ancient Obia or ancient Ethiopia. And so because he was able to recognize and go on the record for that fact, puts him, even though he's lumped up with a lot of the spiritualists and New Ages and, and the Christ Conspiracy Group, if you really read his, his work, for itself and study his work, because his work is more of a study than a read, you know, you will be, begin to recognize that he was like a John Brown 
of the the Afrocentric or Ethiocentric Egyptology. He was similar to our John Brown on that academic um, level, in I and I opinion, and we brought some facts to be on that, and hopefully we can bring more facts. The last book we have here is Lefafa Siddiq or Siddiq Siddiq, the Bandlet of Righteousness. To only name a few of the many texts that we, by the grace of the Almighty, soon expect to compose our Ethiopian Hebrew commentaries and exegesis based upon both the wisdom of the Egyptians or Egypt's Acts of the Apostles 7 and 22, coupled with our Judeo Christian Ethiopian, quote, divine heritage, as the Ethiopian World Federation so says in the preamble and Article 1. Yet this is still to come, and we hope and pray to the Most High for guidance, um, perseverance, and life eternal. Amen. To accomplish such an endeavor. And we also hope that many of your brothers and sisters out there also step forward to contribute to this process. We're seeking the truth. We have to dialogue. We have to, we have to reason as the book of remembrance, Malachi chapter 3, I think roughly chapter 3 verse 16, speaking about that, that book of remembrance, you understand, and how they would communicate one to another. And in these last days and time, how John would preserve that people, you understand? And the faithful and true Rastafarian, we Ethiopian Hebrews, we are that people. But we have to prepare. We have to study and pray and, and work, you understand? We have to know the truth. And then we can see spiritually eye to eye. So this fourth book of Moses is called Numbers. Now, remember, numbers is nowhere in this name. So where do we get the idea of numbers? Well, the idea of numbers comes from the opening context of this particular book. Now, the book derives its name from the fact that it records the enumeration of Israel, the enumeration, the numbering of Israel. Historically, numbers take pl takes up the story where Exodus left it. In a historical context, and we just went through Leviticus, so that might not be able to be easily seen in Leviticus, but when you end Exodus and you begin Numbers, the story from a historical narrative, it picks up where Exodus left, left it or left off. And is the book of the wilderness wanderings of the redeemed people, consequent, that was consequent, or it was a consequence, upon their failure, the failure to enter the land at the Kadesh, the Kadesh Barnea, that they did not enter at the Kadesh Barnea, and because of that failure to enter into the land at that particular point, they missed the jump off, they missed the point of entry, and because of that failure to enter, this people who were redeemed, now, now note this, my brothers and sisters, they were redeemed. They're like when people say, I'm saved, sanctified, and well, I say filled with the Holy Spirit. They, they're filled with some ghosts. But really, you know, the ghost and the spirit is two different entities, two different persons right there. Um, still, what is the reason why even a redeemed people, a saved people, would fall short? So he redeemed them. Did that affect their redemption? It's like I and I as Rastafari. We look at the movement, we say, well, how come the movement is in a state of inertia right now? How come it's not progressing? How come we're not taking advantage of the opportunities individually, but moreover, corporately and collectively? You know what I'm saying? We've missed something, something we're redeemed, yes. But then what do we miss? You understand? Know we, we, we miss the, the, the entering point. And we too have missed, or our ancestors, and we now bear, bear the present reality based on what the past generation chose, like whatever we choose to do, those who come after us will either benefit or get a setback because of that. It's like when the offensive line leaves the, the, the field, the defensive have to pick up wherever, you know, you know how it goes, so we picking up from the next generation. So, um, they failed to enter in 
you understand, during this time of the Ethiopian World Federation. They failed to enter in during this particular time, you know, and believe it or not, you know, this is still the heart of what it's about, but how can we, in a sense, build the, the penthouse if we haven't first laid the foundation or built on the foundation which are laid? Like, you don't start a penthouse on the ground floor. So a lot of what you see, the chick, the, 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 the chick, uh, chick that you see, the argument and back and forth among some, quote, Ethiopian World Federation, everybody want to be the international president, everybody want to be the executive head and say, I'm counsel and we're local number and this and that. Listen, it's the groundwork. The groundwork is, first of all, recognizing what this preamble says, about maintaining the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage. How do you maintain that if you don't know what divine heritage really means? The Torah portions, the scriptures, the Rastafari sabbatical studies will inform you, and it's informing I and I of what that foundation is all about. And we're seeing numerous um, similarities and eye-opening revelation. Like, wow, isn't it so interesting? Forty years later. You understand? Know 40 years later, and we're more than 40 years now. This is why there's such an urgency, you understand, know among many ones and ones, as well as a lot of disappointment. You see, and we, we, we can't ignore the fact that, you know, when we look at who we are as a people and what has been done and what has not been done, there's a lot of disappointment. You see, this is why we have to, we have to um, build and strengthen our faith, you understand, know with with the hearing of the word, with the reading of the word, the studying of the word, the memorizing of the word, and the meditating. You understand? Know that means muttering it, repeating it to ourselves, learning it by heart. You understand? Know this now strengthens us with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit reinforces and affirms that word and it tutors us. It strengthens us. You see, so the faith. It's so important, not just saying, I, Rastafari, uh, Haile Selassie is God, and, 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 you, and you can't really break anything down, and you can't really demonstrate anything you're saying or back it up. That's, that's, that's like a belief. So you say you know this. You understand? You cannot prove it. You understand? And if you can prove it, then you recognize you have to refine and modify your words because some of those kind of discussions about Haile Selassie, being God. In the true sense, we have to ask, what do you mean by God? There's many different words in the scripture which have been translated as God, and the, the, even being godly is to be God. And we speak about divinity, and people say, well, he's not divine. What Christ came to restore was Israel back into that divine relationship, back into that divinity, back into being sons and daughters of God, plain and simple. So a lot of folks in the Gentile white world are confused about those things, and this is the one reason why we continually refer to our Ethiopic reference sources and our truth, you see, our truth. Because some would think that, well, this is speaking about, you understand, some white Jews, converted Jews from Europe, but it's not. I mean, they've had their day in the sun. I mean, you see it, uh, and... And I don't really see what the Bible says is supposed to happen. I see men and people doing this. But the revelation is of Rastafari. And even many of them are coming to that acknowledgement. But the redeemed people, you understand? We, the black people of the world, the redeemed people, right, they had entered into a wilderness of wandering. Here now in the wilderness of North America, wandering. You understand? Still a redeemed people. That did not affect their redeemedness. You know what I'm saying? They still were redeemed. They were purchased back. They were, they were Jah's people. But they now had to wander what, because Jah did something? No, because of their failure to enter the land at Kadesh Barnea. Now, typically, this is a book of service and walk. This is why I find it so. This is a book of service. Service, that means in what way do we serve? When we think about, okay, I and I are doing jaw works, what do we mean by doing jaw works? Are we talking about doing our own thing? You know, like if we're live, doing our own livelihood, that's not really jaw works. You, you know what I'm saying? There are specific works which are jaw works. Don't confuse yourself. You understand? Because then you delude yourself. Then, in a sense, you know, you go through this wilderness experience by yourself. 
you know, like wondering, like, wh what's going on? Why do I feel lost? Because you have gone away from the teachings and the faithful obedience to it, and you might have been hearing it, but there's some things that we need to do. You understand? And we need to commit this word to our heart, like learn it by heart. It's very, very important. Typically, it is the book of service and walk. So it's our service, our gelagalot. How do we serve? What ministry are we in? What is our calling? Have you ever asked of whole what is my calling? What do I, have I, has Johnny showed me a calling and I haven't gone into it because of whatever, whatever? You know, because now what we're doing is we say, well, I want to serve you, John, like this, but John already said, I want you to do this. And then we find that we're chasing after a dream and not being faithful to his revelation. Now, it is the book of service and war and thus completes with the preceding books a beautiful moral order. So let's look at some of the key words here. What is saying that this book right here, okay, they're wandering, but they're redeemed people, right? Let, let us keep that in mind. They're redeemed people. This is a book of what? This is a book of put on this side service, and next to service you can put ministry, right? Ministry. What is one's ministry? You understand? And there's many ways that one can serve in Jah, you understand, and in Jah works. You know what I'm saying? With their brothers and sisters in the Al Kidan and in the covenant. You know, was, um, remember, nothing about this is of a personal, like, just like some people, you know, they said no portion of scripture is like of private, you know, like a personal, private kind of thing. It's really speaking to a people. And in that people, in that economy for God's people, his corporate entity, all the individuals, you understand, in I and I Father's house are taken care of and are maintained. But you have to come into that yoke. That means his order. Walk, here's the walk, right? Remember the walk is halakha, a conversation also in the New Testament is walk. That means how do we, uh, how is our goings? You understand, how, how are our goings? You understand, how are our goings? I mean, do people see I and I say, Man, I'm not down with those people, but those are some, they're, they're John's people. Those are God's people. Do people cite the eye in that way? It might be because not that they just are the worst enemies of Rastafari, but you might be um, walking funny in Rastafari according to what even a heathen would know is the requirements of a king of kings such as his majesty for his people. So we have to note those things. We have to recognize those things. I'm, I'm talking about what we need to correct that's in our, in, in our ability to correct. But it's speaking next about a moral order, right? So let's put moral, right, moral order, right? So we have moral order, right? We call it theocracy or, or moral theocracy, morality, international morality, collective security. This this now shows us the system that Jah already gave us here. That's why, as Matthew said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. That means if that is our God Father, then for our part, we should also glory in the Bible. But first, we need to learn why did He glory? In, why does He glory in the Bible? You understand? Know because this is our honor. This is how we come from being niggers to being uh, neguses or, or negestat. You understand, on that sort of a level. So Genesis is the book of the creation and the fall. Exodus is a book of redemption, hence redeemed people. Leviticus is a book of worship and fellowship. So we briefly have touched on Leviticus, mainly the worship, you understand, as well as the fellowship, you understand, which is the brotherhood. Now, and numbers here is of that which should follow that which now follows this order. So first we have that creation. Then we also have the fall of man or the fall of the, the black man, right? Then Exodus now, we have that redemption, the movement of John's people. Leviticus, we're learning of the worship or the worship. You understand? How if one comes to John, he sets that pattern of Levi, although we're after the order of Melchizedek, but the order of Melchizedek of the lion of the tribe of Judah is according to the pattern of Levi. And that's in the book of um, 
the epistle of Hebrews. So we have worship or worship and fellowship, and in numbers we have that which should follow, that which is sequitur, that which comes in its logical sequence is service and walk. So now we're coming to the point of service and walk. And very interesting in the ministry, that's one thing that's been on my mind. I was actually just meditating like, okay, how can I and I really work with those who are willing to work with I and I and willing to come together and, and inspire them to follow the call of God, learn, and so that we can go to the next. It's not about telling somebody so much what you need to do. You understand? It's really hearing your testimony of what Jah is saying to you or what his word is revealing. And then I and I can reason and, you know, that's how things work out, especially if it's in the family. You know, was, so I've been wondering, like, okay, how do we get to that next level? And now I'm doing this teaching. It's all coming together. You know, I'm beginning to see, well, since we've touched on the creation, we've touched on the fall, you understand, in Genesis, we've touched on redemption, and the coming out in Exodus. So, so we've touched on Leviticus, which is the worship and the, the fellowship. Now here in Numbers, we are dealing with the service or the ministry. This word, you'll find this in the New Testament as ministration, ministration or ministry. Also, administration also comes under service, you understand, of service. You understand what the Christ says, that the, that the greatest amongst you all, the greatest of us, would be the one who serves the most and who serves others. So actually, so that there should be a competition in his will, you understand, for service as well as showing we are walking like he walk. You understand, we are going about as he go about. But the key is to study. The key is our study. The key is writing. And one thing I want to really emphasize to one's writing. Very soon for the discipleship, we're going to have a little more structure to the teaching, um, even with essays, you know, certain essays that can be written, whether it's about the particular, you know, um, subject matter. Ones may not have the ability on a week-to-week -week basis within the Torah portion. Ideally speaking, it should be every Torah portion should inspire a little essay from, from each of the deck of Mesmore, you know, within one's own journal book after one goes through it. Even if they say, I didn't really get too much out of this. I didn't understand this or whatnot. That should still be there. You understand? This is how iron sharpen iron. But if the iron don't know the next iron is weak or can't find the next iron because it's hiding out, it can't really sharpen it. You know what I mean? Anyway, so it is important. The next note right here in the Schofield is important to see that nothing was left to self-will. That's a very important verse right there. I wish I had my highlighter. I would highlight that verse. It says that it is important to see that nothing was left to self-will. One of the main things I will encourage once again is to get a Schofield Study Bible. Download the one that we have at the website, www.lojsociety.org, but get a hard copy, the first Schofield Study Bible. You can go to our website and the books, the, you know, the books tab, and you, you can find this, which one, because there's a couple of different Schofields out there. But, but, but you really need, I think one of the main tools is a good Bible. One of the main tools, and for a study Bible, there's a lot of important hints, scripturally speaking, non-denominationally speaking. That means that why we recommend this Bible, because it's not a, a particular Christian denomination trying to big up its own little spin. It is basically um, ones who love the Word of God and have studied the Word of God trying to put together the best, most, most scriptural justifications for different ideas, doctrines, so forth, and so on. And that is what gives and hopefully will give us a, a good common sense. Here's where we as Rastafari recover I and I common sense. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a common sense. You know, you can have your own feeling about it, but, but when we're speaking about John's things, and that which belong to Jah, there should be a common sense, a common understanding. Otherwise, the body is going to operate funny. It's going to operate against itself. And this is what we kind of see. It's like the body is like handicapped in a sense. You understand? Well, the body is getting injured. 
You understand? Or, or it can't really walk that well or move that well or run that well. You understand? And we all have a part and a responsibility in it. And it begins with the Kala Kidan. It begins with our relationship with Kedus Abba in and through Yeshua HaMoshia, Yesus Christos. You can't, you can't get to our Holy Father any other way. Kedus Abba You understand? I mean, it's very clear. And I, I remind Rastafari of this. You understand? It's because of the grace that we even know and have this spirit of him and love of him. Now we have to show our true love by our obedience. If it says if one love him, it will, it will keep. They will keep his word. You understand? If we keep his word, you understand? Then the Father. Let's just point to this right here. It was in John chapter fourteen, verse um, verse twenty two, where it says Judas, not Iscariot, saith to him, not Iscariot. Judas is not a bad name. Is 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 Iscariot that shows who the traitor was. There were other Judases, and here in John 14 and 22, you can see that. It says, Judas saith to him, Not Iscariot, Lord, Adoni, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself to us and not to the world? So another Judas, Jude, the one who wrote the book, or the one letter of Jude that we have before um, Revelation in the New Testament, that particular Jude, Jude asks, Yeshua, he said, how is it that you're going to manifest yourself to us in this time that you're speaking of, this like future time, but you're not going to manifest to the world? How are, in other words, how are we going to know the return of the Lord and the world not going to, not to know? So here's a key point in the scriptures in John chapter, chapter 14, verse 22, where, where Adoni or the Lord is going to manifest himself to his true disciples, his true followers, and not to the world. And Jesus answered, or Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, if a man loves who? Loves Jesus, loves Yeshua, loves Jesus, if you please, the true Christ. If a man love me, he will keep my words. He will keep my words. So how important is the teaching of his majesty that says, that may our kith and kin who rise up in the future take note of the word that you have spoken, quote, without me ye can do nothing, end quote, and that is John 15 and 5, and that's in the preface of His Majesty's autobiography, autobiography He would tell Naya Chopia Rimja, the autobiography of His Imperial Majesty, My Life and Ethiopia's Progress. And he's, he's, he's sharing for us a prayer, the Father now praying in the Holy Spirit to the Son, saying that may our brothers, our kiss, our kin, who will rise in the future, take note of the word that you have spoken. You understand? Know Without me, ye can do nothing. So it's showing that triune, that trinity relationship that we might know of his majesty, we recognize we he's manifested himself to I and I, but in order to strengthen our relationship in spirit and in truth, according to his covenant, it must be in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach. And this should be clear from the Bible, from the teaching of his imperial majesty, and from the witness of the brothers and sisters who have witnessed the, the, the truth of this in real time. And my father will love him. And we, notice that we, that divine we, and we will come to him and make our, another aspect of that we, abode or dwelling with him and in him. That's Tawahido. That's, that's, the, that's the union of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, with that particular anointed one, the one who loves him and keeps his word, and keeps his word. That means that we have to know his word by heart. And so that's a good exercise, you understand, for us as brothers and sisters, a good exercise, you understand, begin to, you know, challenge our memories. And writing also helps a lot with the memory. Well, every real disciple has to be a writer anyway, you understand, not a writer of fiction, but a writer of truth. And you begin with your notation, taking notes, right, with, you know, um, um, taking names and kicking dragons. He that loveth me not... Keep if not my sayings. Think about that. 
he that don't love Yeshua and therefore don't love Kedusa Abatach and don't keep these things. The saying, you know, they don't remember these things. They don't keep, it's, it's, you know, they remember silly worldly things, but they don't keep the sayings of Yeshua. And the word which ye hear is not mine. So Yeshua is saying to us the word that he was speaking was not even his. He's saying, but the Father which sent him. Wow, the Father which sent me. So we say that his majesty is I and I Father, and we say that it is him that fulfills this revelation of Scripture concerning the conquering lion the tribe of Judah, therefore fulfilling the, 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 the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. You know saying? That's the only way man can come to the brotherhood again through the acknowledgement of the fatherhood of God. You know saying? But the Father which sent me, that's his words, these things have I spoken to you, being yet present with you, but the comforter, which is the, hey, you have ghosts here, it says Holy Ghost, strike that out to be Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Whom the Father will send in my name. Notice the Father sends that in the name of Yeshua. So those who did not recognize the name of the Yeshua and trying to get around Yeshua to the Father, you know, they're... they're they're asked out, in a sense, because they're being jackasses. They're trying to avoid the ordinance, you know what I'm saying, the access. It's like if somebody gives you an access code, a password, why would you try something else if that's the password that works? You know what I'm saying? And if you tried something else, who should feel sorry for you? You know what I'm saying? If it's very clear that this is what the password is. So the password to the Father is Jesus Christos. It says, the, whom the Father will send in my name. Now, he sends the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Atenine, to be our, our comforter, but to be a strengthener, a supporter. You know what I'm saying? A supporter, a psychic and a spiritual support. And it says, he shall teach you all things. Because those who have... Um, recognize and, 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 and build a relationship, seeking to build their own personal relationship in, in true spirituality. It's amazing. What, you know, when it says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, you recognize you don't want to know, I mean, everything. And that's just, if you ask out of order, you're not going to receive. But that which you need to know, trusting in the Holy Spirit and doing your part, the answers, you know, just reveals itself. You understand? And Having that testimony in real time, I think, is so important for each of us. This is one of the reasons why, it, like when we read the part in Ezekiel about the Valley of the Dry Bones, the people now are like skull and bones. You can see it. They're wearing skull and bones around in their clothing. They worship a, a culture of death. You understand? And people are like, oh, man, what's going on? I look in the book of Ezekiel, and when, when Yahweh asks Ezekiel, his keel, he says, can these bones live again? His keel is saying like, oh, Lord, thou knowest. You know saying? You knowest. And, and um, Ezekiel was told to preach. You know saying? To preach to these bones. And as he saw to preach, and the more he saw to preach, the, the skull and bones began to take on sinews and flesh and began to, you know, this is amazing because we know this kind of visual from like movies, CGIF, like, flesh coming back on bones and stuff like that. But Ezekiel was seeing this like 3,000, a little more than 2,000, between two to 3,000 years ago. He was seeing this in his vision. But what's so deep about it is that that is what we need to be doing right now. And each true disciple or follower of Yeshua HaMoshiach, every true Rastafari, every true disciple of Christ, of the Moshiach, is a proclaimer or a preacher, you understand, of what you know to be true. You may be like, hey, I'm still learning, but here's what I know. You understand? And it's so important because all that's being put out there in the ear, Satan is the prince of the ear, and all that's being put out is negative. You understand? It's, it's like negative stuff. is a negative vibration. And preaching the word and proclaiming it, you know what I'm saying? In the various different ways and medias, you know, people can be creative when they want to be creative. You know what I'm saying? Just pray on it, I say, and, and seek to get that, you know, that, that, that I vine thumbs up, you know, where you know in your spirit that 
that that jives with you, that Jah truly has approved of that. But you have to build that relationship. Each of us got to do that. So that when we come together, you understand, the, the stronger the community can be. I mean, there's a whole level of metaphysical um, speculation, some would call it, but actually, we're bringing to the point of actualization. You understand? Because we know this is true. You know what I'm saying? We, we, have, we have the knowledge of the truth, not just information about good and evil. We're past that darajah. You know what I'm saying? That's what causes a trip up and fall. And bring all things to your remembrance. So the Holy Spirit will bring everything into our remembrance. Look at that word remembrance. The Sabbatical, Shabbatical commandment is to remember to think about, to meditate, to call it to mind. So here it says that while Christ was amongst us, he sold us these things, but the comforter, the atanaim, or the tutor, it can be translated from the Ethiopic, the tutor, spiritually the Holy Spirit tutors us in the Holy Word. And when we seek to walk and trust by prayer, it's that Holy Spirit that is sent to strengthen us. You understand? So it's important to study the scripture and to think of the word and, and knowing, just knowing, have a basic knowledge of the word like a spiritual bank account, like currency. You understand? In the prayer life, the study, you know, as you, you study and you fellowship, you grow. So you don't have an anxiety. Don't have no anxiety. Some having an anxiety about learning it all at one time or trying to learn it by a certain day. I mean, like, where you get that from? A lot of that stuff you have to deny and just trash. Start off like a, like a newborn babe in spirit and in truth. So if the spirit will bring all these things to our remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. And 